after the last couple of losses, you've been extremely positive post game, at least with us. Why is that your approach? Even when things aren't going good, you're gonna, you know, be as positive as you can. Well, you know, when your guys give you an, an effort that gives you a chance to to win the game, um, then there's it's gonna be some little thing that can be adjusted. It's not like you gotta throw the baby out with the bathwater. And so our goal as a staff is to figure out how to keep us moving forward. And uh, we talk about getting one percent better every day. Um, you know, putting games in a box and moving forward, and and it does, there's just little tweaks. And if if you're negative, right, you just you just bring in. It's like the the energy vampire, you know, sucking all the energy out the room. I don't want to be that guy, and uh, I don't want my team to be that kind of a team. And I, I do believe that we're like one or two plays away from from being able to win. I was six games now that are basically one possession games and you know you can look back and you got to figure out what is it the the one thing that we can adjust to change that could result in maybe a different outcome in two or three of them you know and that that's 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 our approach as a staff um i said this i'm reading this book uh called do the new you by stephen furtick and he says that you're not stuck unless you stop you know and and so we're not gonna stop we're gonna keep trying to figure this thing out because because we're real close and I know when you stack losses together it doesn't seem like you're close but that's why we don't look at it like six games we look at it like one game what can we improve how are we getting better and moving forward so I, I we're close when you look at BYU um, at least from what I've noticed they seem to get a lot of, generate a lot of offense to their big man if it's if he's, if he's not shooting He's screening, he's passing. Just how difficult of a defensive assignment is that for you guys? Yeah, no, their style of play is so different, right? And I heard somebody compare it to, like in football, you know, um, going into playing someone who now runs the triple option, right? You got to teach your scout team how to run that triple option. Uh, now you got to defend a lot of rules that normally apply. Or back in the day when no one ran the spread, and then all of a sudden you had to play a team that ran the spread, it, it's just so different, right? And so their style of play is different than everybody else's in the league. So some of your defensive rules have to change. Some of your help side coverages have to change. And, and then you have to get your scout team to try and run that and make that adjustment pretty quick. So it is difficult. You know, Khalifa, and both Khalifa and um, Tella, how you say his name? Treor? Yeah, Treori. Uh, they're different. Right. And so they run like two different styles of offense when each guy is in the game. One guy is a dribble handoff guy who can pick and pop. The other guy is more of a ball screen roll post up, you know, playing out of four round one spacing. And so you have to it, it's it's difficult to adjust and to, to play. And you just try to, like, be the team with the most energy and take away what they do best, which is the 30 plus threes a game that they shoot and um, try to make them score twos. You mentioned needing to do the simple things better. What are a few of those that you're like speaking about? Um, catching the ball without bobbling it, dribbling it without it going out of bounds. Um, you know, just those, those simple things like catching the ball with your eyes and if we'll catch the ball with our eyes and we have our hands and feet ready, we'll be better shooters, we'll be better passers, and we can eliminate, you know, two or three turnovers that are really self-inflicted. And when you're talking two or three turnovers, possessions in one possession games, it you know becomes huge. Having been in Austin, kind of saw David Gasson, you know, struggle to even get up and down from the podium after the game. What can you say about? just what he's playing through pain-wise and what he's been able to do because of that? Yeah, no, so proud of David, man, and, and his toughness, his leadership. Um, you know, he's uh, – we're, we're having to monitor him at practice and things like that, but he's he's playing through a tremendous amount of pain, and, but he really cares about his teammates and the team and about winning, and uh, so, yeah, real proud of him. You talked about uh, – when you're, you're one or two plays away maybe, but is it difficult to correct that when you're playing such different styles of opponents game to game when you also have to worry about getting the, I guess, getting the scout scouting report in? Yeah, and you know, I mean, what, what we're trying to do is figure out what's the com what's a common denominator in, in each that, that we can then work on 
because uh, you can't work on everything and figure out what are the common denominators and then, then really focus in on that. And, uh, you know, we, we got to shoot more catch-and-shoot shots and less off-the-dribble shots uh, and, you know, and figure out ways to get to the free throw line. Everybody talks about the quick turnaround Saturday to Monday, but on the other side of that, does that give you a chance maybe to do a little more work when you've got uh, Tuesday through Friday, the longer stretch on the other end there? Yeah, yeah, well, you know, you're trying to do two things, prepare for the next game and maybe even look ahead a little bit because you got a quick turnaround. Um, you're trying to get your guys rest, right, recovery, because, you know, we're in they call the dog days of February and uh, – you know, it's the healthy teams that you know can can win games. So, so there's a lot that that, that goes into it. And, and so, and also you talk about putting games in a box, one one and zero. Oh, but do you do you have discussions with the team at all about the bigger <coughs> picture and what you need to to do at this time of year, or is it is it all just the one? No, no, no. You know, I mean, we we show big picture and then we break it down into details on how <laughs> how you know because you. You know, you eat a steak one bite at a time, you know, but you, you got to see the steak. So we show them the steak, and then we try to figure out how we can do it one bite at a time. Kind of going off of that, you guys started off 4-1 and one in Big 12 play in the first five, and now you have five left. Is that maybe something you can tell your team that, you know, we are capable of going on a hot run? Hey, well, somebody's going to do it, right? Somebody in the country is not on the bubble right now or not in the field or um, is in a struggle, and they're going to get hot. Uh, a few years ago, one of our guys, David, right, was at Virginia Tech, and they, you know, they won seven of their last eight games or something like that, ended up winning the ACC tournament with the hottest team going into the NCAA tournament. You know, somebody's going to do it. At, at Baylor, you know, one year we won like seven in a row, then lost five of our last six. And then it was another year we were two and eight and then won seven of our last eight. You know, I mean, there's somebody in the country is going to do it. Why not be the Cats? And then going back to that stretch, what are some of the things that you can remember your team did well that – you know, needs to start happening again through these last five games? Uh, you know, I mean, we made shots, we offensive rebound, and we got to the free throw line. Coach, does your team have an opportunity to play w with some freedom here of kind of a sense of nothing to lose down the stretch? Um, man, we try all the time to play with love, joy, and freedom. You know, and uh, I'm we play a game, you know, and I, I know like winning is like real important and I, I want to see these guys win, but um, on the scoreboard, but you know, if we, um, we, we try not to, try not to have them understand, like feel the other pressures that you have to have, because you can't play the game like that, you know. Um, so uh, we're, it's not like we have nothing to lose, because, I mean, we got a lot to play for, um, but I, I don't want to put extra pressure on them or, you know, just make it harder than it, than it needs to be. For Tyler, he's been best in that second half when he can't think and he just just has to go out and play. Can that translate to these final five games? If it's, it's too late in the season, he just, he just has to go out and get it done? Yeah, well, not just him, but the whole team. I, I just, like, we, we play with a different sense of urgency in the last five minutes of the game, and we have to bring that approach to the first five minutes of the game and, and every media, you know. I mean, that's, that's where we're at. And so hopefully we all have a sense of urgency. And last one for me. What's been the biggest thing that you feel like you've learned this season? Man, I'm, that's a really good question. I, I, I'm learning patience, um, you know, and, uh, and not to overreact. Um, and so that's... You know, things there, I, I, I'm learning, um, you know, just, just how important it is to, to have heart connections with these guys because, uh, it, it, you know, the, the, the line between what's on the scoreboard, you know, the, the one possession game. Just think about this, right? Like, I know we've lost, what, five, six one possession games, is it something like that in the last six, something like that, right? Just imagine what we'd be feeling like if we didn't win those six overtime games. Yeah, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, you know, that's the, trying to have perspective on this thing and but also knowing that, like, 
there's there's enough basketball left in the season. I've seen it done over and over by multiple teams. I've been a part of it multiple times. Eric's been a part of it. Uh, Will's been a part of it. McNair, um, David Gasson's been a part. I mean, we got other guys on staff. We've all we've been we're built for these type of moments, and uh, so I, I, I'm excited. I'm like more excited today than I was two days ago. And two days ago, I really thought like w- who's gonna win that game. You know, what I mean, I was that, that's what was gonna how we were in there to win that game and. Uh, and our guys, you know, we were in a good position to do it. We just didn't get it done. And so I, I'm, I'm, I'm fired up about moving forward. What, what are a few things that will can do to help you out just a little bit more than he has been in the last couple of games? Um, be consistent. That's it. Like, he can't be like elite one moment and non existent the next. We need a consistent will through the game. Will is, he, he is physically capable of being a double double guy, and he just has to mentally have that approach and um, play with force. When he plays with force, um, he can impact the game, and he's really good around the rim. Like to see him like find home there, and, and so we've talked about. It. We showed film, you know. It's uh, you know that's that's um, that's the big thing with with this team is just everybody consistently being the best version of themselves. Not just Will, but you asked about Will. So. Uh, 